Hey, everybody. <laughs> so today I am here with L of Stellar Sanctum. We are going to be doing the second part of, uh, of our love stuff talk about asteroids and sinistry. Specifically, it's going to focus on that part because that's the part that we didn't really get too much in the, um, in, in the Instagram live. Mm. So what do you, I guess we'll start out with sinistry maybe. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Do you want to kind of talk about what sinistry is maybe? Yeah, of course. Um, so that feels like a good place to start. Um, so yeah, sinistry is literally overlapping your birth chart with the birth chart of someone else to um, check for your compatibility. I don't know if I even want to say any more on it. I think that uh, <laughs> it's quite self-explanatory. Do you have any anything else you want to add on to that? No, that's pretty good. <laughs> They're just literally right on top of each other. And mm -hmm. you look and see what's going on in between both charts. Yeah. And you can see, you know, we'll get more into this, but you can start looking into like, well, what's our communication style like? What's our our sex life going to be like you know what are our arguments going to be like you can find all sorts of things out from the sinistry chart when you look at a sinistry chart what is the first thing what are some of the first things that you i mean i know all charts are different but mm -hmm. what do you look at first what do you think yeah what do you look at first moon moon moon, moon. aspects yeah um because you know, maybe it's because i'm like a very lunar person but that to me is so important if you if you're speaking the same language emotionally um and I think you know difficult or harsher moon aspects are like that's going to flavor so much of the relationship um so yeah I, I would tend to look at the moon first um what's your thoughts on on moon aspects in sinistry Oh, the moon is super important. Um, nice moon aspects. Uh, and this is and this part isn't universal. I like moon conjunctions. Mm -hmm. They don't always I mean, some, I've seen that also not be so great. But yeah, oftentimes it's the, the people do speak that same language in in the end because it's it could, and because it's a conjunction. <laughs> it's oftentimes very much the same way not just by sign but even by you know yeah by degrees or what have you um yes moon is very important yeah it's almost like I don't know, it's, it's definitely a feeling of like safety so for example i'm a, a water moon and around other water moons i just feel very safe because i know they get it they get the like yeah just my emotional ways and as a, a water moon like that is incredibly important to me that I feel understood in that sense um mm -hmm. so yeah moon, moon aspects are definitely super important and you know if there are harsher aspects like the square or the opposition or the in conjunct it's it doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship isn't a like isn't a viable option it just means that there will be hurdles and that that may be a really big arc of your relationship like learning to to get more on the same page emotionally um yeah which, which could be a thing that eventually really strengthens you you know but it's just not gonna yeah. quite click straight away the same as you know with the trines and textiles where is your moon again um it is at 16 degrees capricorn Right, okay. Yeah. Mine's at um ten eleven degrees Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah, because we were talking about that. Yours happened to be, I think, conjunct my Pluto. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I like I like the Pluto and Scorpio generation and they like me. <laughs> I yeah. always wondered yeah. like why why am I so drawn to the world? And then when I started looking into sinistry, I was like, oh, <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's why <laughs> no I, I know what you mean though about like the well i don't I mean, and like i don't get, i love earth moons i do uh i i really do i i like water uh, not that i don't like any moons but i i do get on with water moons too um i appreciate the sensitivity that water moons have that i 
I myself know that I, I have, but I don't express. Okay. Right. So, uh, but I appreciate that because all the water signs do that sensitivity in a different way, but I definitely appreciate that sensitivity mm-hmm. um, in each of them. And so. And, you know, it definitely complements each other. Just thinking about like water and earth, the, a water moon is going to feel, this is being very general, but a lot of the time a water moon is going to feel quite overwhelmed and exhausted because they are so sensitive and they are so mm-hmm. tapped into everything. And so you can see how an earth moon would be a really positive energy for a water moon because they represent that like groundedness, that steadfastness that feels very, very safe and comforting to a a water moon. So yeah, you can see like compatibility wise, how the sex style um, Uh is is really like feeding in there. Uh And the opposition, um, Uh you know, the balancing out, you know, I think is a really beautiful aspect to have. And I've had, I've had actually some, some cancer moons in my life. Um, yeah. my, my grandmother has a cancer moon and she is more sensitive than me, but I, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't bother me. I, I do. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate that because she is, she can be sensitive in a way that I never could be. <laughs> so, yeah. it, you know, it's a, uh, yeah. 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 Maybe, you know, the, the positive influence that a water moon would have on you is to show you like guide the way a little bit more with with stepping more into the wells of emotion um yeah. as opposed to uh reality <laughs> you know but earth moons yeah. are obviously so good at like staying in reality and water yeah. moons can like show show them like step into my world where things get weird (laughs) (laughs) and where you feel (laughs) um another thing that I like to look at in synastry um are the chart rulers Mm. what they're doing what they're doing um and, and well this is this is this isn't like universal but if i if i see the chart rulers and i use both traditional and modern rulership so i'd look at both you know yeah but if you if you have some if you have two people that say have like their chart rulers are squaring each other i do find that that can mm, there can be like there, there is like a baseline sometimes yeah. of, of tension um it, of course there are other things that could make that really you know that can make that not so much but there is i found some sort of underlying yeah this just persistent like who we are is yes there's something yeah yeah no of course that can be worked with but yeah (laughs) yeah so your chart road is jupiter right yes where's your jupiter um in aries in the fourth and it's retrograde aries fourth retrograde and what degree is it 20 okay so our chart rulers a sextile as well so mine is my Aquarius sun at 11 degrees um oh that's nice I like that (laughs) so we got sextile moon and sextile chart ruler we're two out of two so far (laughs) but yeah that is that is totally something that I do and I don't really see that talked about a lot the chart I I, I didn't um think to write that down when I was doing my notes love that but that it is a I think that's what what else do you like to well that's kind of made me now think of the nodes um and oh yeah yeah so if so like me and you for example have our nodes switched around so my south node is conjunct your north node and vice versa mm-hmm. um like to it's like one degree apart isn't it mm-hmm. um and so with this when you've got the nodal axis flipped around to put it really really simply it's like the south node person has developed the traits that the north node person like in a past life one person has developed the traits that the other needs to develop in this life and vice versa Mm -hmm. so there's just very much this like back and forth feed through energy of like oh you've got an issue oh I I know how to do this I live and breathe this thing and and then the other person's like oh here's an obstacle on my north node journey and the south node person comes in like here we go here's the tools um so let me show you what to do (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. I have this aspect with my partner as well. Um, and oh, cool. it's, it's very, very prevalent. Like it's just so glaringly obvious throughout our whole relationship. So yeah, I really like that, that aspect. But then, you know, you can see it with, if you have both your south nodes conjunct, then you might be, the relationship might feel a bit stagnant or like, you might kind of like <clears throat> run out of things to like learn together quite quickly you know some people might not mind that but I know for me that would be really boring and I'd be like no <laughs> and, and even can like planetary conjunctions to to south nodes or mm -hmm. that if, if there's not I I found that if there's not like a a conjunction also to the north node or to right. or something it can there can become like it can become stagnant and People can become so comfortable yeah, exactly. that there's no growth and comfortable isn't yeah. even always really comfortable. Sometimes it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's denial. <laughs> Some, yes. A lot of the times it is. Yes. <laughs> it's not, it's okay if you're comfortable. I'm just, I'm so scorpionic. I'm like always, always be changing. Um, but well, yeah. No, and I mean, and then that's what we're supposed to, well, yeah. And I mean, that's what we're supposed to do anyway is we're yeah. not, you know, I mean, we want to, like, you know, not total discomfort, but we, we are supposed to change. We're not supposed to stay the same, you know? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, the nodes are a really interesting one that kind of feels fairly somewhat similar to what you were saying about um, the chart rulers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else do you like to look at? Um, it depends on the sort of relationship. Um, yeah. Like if this is a, if this is say a friendship, I've had I have had friends come you know want to um I like to look at what like the planetary rulers of the of their 11th houses are doing or what mm -hmm. planets might overlay into one another's 11th houses um even the fifth house too same yeah. thing seventh house certainly as well um business partnerships would be more of like the seventh house chart ruler mm -hmm. or not chart ruler the seventh house planetary ruler yeah <laughs> where what that's doing um yeah I, I definitely like to look at overlays though too overlays are a uh, some people I don't know some people kind of leave those out too I, I like those to see kind of where somebody's do you want to what, explain, what's their, explain more about oh, overlays? yeah I might want to <laughs> um okay so when you've got a sinistry chart you've got one chart in the center and another chart outside and like, let's say you've got your son in your first house. This might happen to fall in the 12th house of your partner or, or whoever, you know, you're doing synastry with. Your son falling in their 12th house would be considered a house overlay. Um, so in this example, you would be kind of lighting up their unconscious. You would be lighting, you would be lighting up things that they may not be as aware of and depending on how they handle their their own 12th house will kind of give you an idea as to how that goes you know yeah. <laughs> and how you handle your son say too um could also light up spirituality in them mm -hmm. um yeah would you say this also works for the ascendant so like I'm I'm now because my partner's a, a Virgo rising and I'm a Leo rising and so I obviously sit in his um 12th house and that feels what you were just saying feels very true about how I mm -hmm. breathe a lot of like spirituality into his life yeah um yeah you probably do because I mean the ascendant I mean that's such a personal mm -hmm. place that yeah I, I would think it would mm -hmm. I've also don't know what your thoughts are on this I've also read that <laughs> 12th house sinistry is like watch out for those people because you know it's like <laughs> the house of hidden enemies um yeah and that is one yeah yeah it can thoughts. certainly go yeah <laughs> I mean you know I like to veer a little bit more positively in general mm -hmm. um just because well I'm a 12th house son so I'm gonna want to be a little bit more you know when it comes to this you know <laughs> yeah you know uh, <laughs> that's fair enough <laughs> you know people people rag on on the on the not you but you know people rag on the 12 they rag on the eighth and it's like nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you know but it, it can be though it can be hidden enemies absolutely um 
I would want to, I would have to see other things yeah. going on um, to make that call. Like mm -hmm. if there are a bunch of harsh aspects between the two people, I might think maybe, maybe that son falling in that other person's 12th house could, could cause something like that to happen. Yeah. And I, I'm also thinking that, you know, if you have a planet or a point or whatever that sits in your partner's or your person's 12th house, then you might, whatever area that planet rules, you might feel quite neglected in if that person doesn't have a very active spiritual practice because 12th house is the stuff that you, you don't yeah. consciously tap into. Um, yeah. And so say, to use this example again, like my ascendant falling in my partner's 12th, my, I can sometimes feel like I'm not being seen um, because my partner can't tap into that Leoness that is so intrinsic to my my essence. I could see that, you know. Yeah. So if yeah. there was a, if your Mercury fell in there, you might there might be something a bit like that feels a bit off, perhaps about the communication. Um, Good. Yeah. It's certain, yeah, but I could see that. I could see how that could, and I could see the same thing. Um, maybe not at. I could see the same thing going on with eighth house overlays mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. maybe not as severely, just because right. I did. the eighth house is. I mean, it's like a like I think of it as like a bridge between the conscious and the unconscious. So it is more accessible in a way, but yeah. it's still. It's like the subconscious. Um, it's like yeah, that that layer in between, and then the twelfth is yes. like. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. So it's like, it, it's more a little bit more accessible, but I could still see things, what you're talking about happening and overlays there. Like, yeah, well. getting a bit lost, almost lost in, in translation. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, but then it can also be, know, yeah, these can be such <laughs> great, if you're that yeah. way inclined, if you're a spiritual being, and the other person is as well, then you you've nailed that part don't even worry about that and you're now existing in this space of like wow we are like bathing in yeah. each other right now um yeah it can be it can't yeah it, it can be a really lovely thing with mm -hmm. with people that are tapped into that or are willing to try to tap into that yeah. you know yeah yeah for sure for sure um so I think an another super important thing to look at is mercury um oh yeah communication is king um <laughs> it's just yeah so important probably what I'd look at after the moon um is mercury see see what's going on there like do your communication styles line up like if someone has you know really well a lot of mercurial energy in their chart like a lot of Gemini stuff going on um then that person is naturally going to want to talk a lot about the relationship. Let's say a Venus in Gemini is that's going to be a core a core need. <clears throat> um, but if the synastry is saying like this is a person that generally doesn't really have the capacity to tap in, or has a lot of blocks around tapping into their their throat and speaking their truth, then then you might have some issues there. Oh yeah. 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 Communication styles. I think we talked about that. Like, does it, like when that doesn't function, that that's yeah. like the downfall of everything. <laughs> with Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to speak the same language is so important. Yeah. So I think that would be a really good one to, you know, it's okay if you have difficult aspects between like your Mercury and even like your third house stuff with your partner or your person it's just like you can use your synastry chart like okay well where's the the remediation for that then like what do I do what what can I implement how can we ease this sort of um separateness so it's like with all these things we're talking about it's not the be all and end all no it's not um I would like to mention if you have like um aspects like, especially with mercury because mercury is such a it, communication is so important um the midpoint between mm. the per one person's mercury and the other person's mercury calculating it 
and by uh, by sign and house, I found that it can be a way to ease that. Like if it's a square, especially the squares, you can do it with the oppositions too, but especially the squares and the and the king kunks or inconjunct, mm -hmm. um, it can be a way to uh, to ease the ease whatever's going on. And if there's somebody's planet there that happens to be at that midpoint, it adds it it, it makes it to where well, it kind of does put the a slight burden on that person because it's right. their planet. But their planet can be a good vehicle for actually, yeah, helping to ease this. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that you use midpoints so much. Um, this is something that I often overlook, like unless it's really glaringly obvious. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I love that um, bridging the gap with with the midpoint. Yeah, I, I found that it does. I mean. Um, Oftentimes it does seem to, and, and there will also, you'll notice that there are like other things in the chart that kind of allude to, okay, this, this feels like this might actually work for these people. Yeah. If, if they're willing to, to do it, you know, put yeah, in the work. Sure. But. Nice. Where's your Mercury? Scorpio. Oh yeah. Conjunct your Pluto, isn't it? In the 11th house. Yeah. Mine's yes. in, in Capricorn at 18 degrees. So that's... Oh, so that's also sextile. <laughs> yeah, and that's... Is that conjunctural moon? Yep, sure yeah. is. Cool. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next one I have down is Venus. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Looking at yeah. Venus. Um, uh, for, like, yeah, shared values. Pretty big one in, in relationships. We were talking about this yesterday on on the instagram live that you tend to choose people who share your your values yes and if and, and that's something like you know it, it's funny values are something that they should be more upfront right in the relationship like when but a lot of times in a relationship or when relationships start you're not always thinking about this right you're <laughs> not always but it's like this is something that i found might not be seen until a little later on like mm -hmm. Oh shit, we don't share this. <laughs> yeah. We we're you know what I mean? Um sometimes it's not as in your face as like the emotional stuff or you know you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. Um that feels really true that sort of energetic behavior of um the the value side of Venus of like yeah, it takes unless you are the type of person, unless you are, let's say you've got a lot of Libra stuff going on in your chart, you probably are gonna go straight in saying, like, what do you, what are your values? Do we yeah. share the same beliefs? Um, you know, are we compatible in this way? Because I know, like me, for example, I am I will on the first day be talking about very very heavy topics because I want to know what type <laughs> of person you are and if you can't yeah. stomach that then you can't stomach you're probably <laughs> yeah no, and that's uh, well and that's that's fair enough you put it's all up front right and then yeah uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that <laughs> um so yeah it, it depends on what type of person you are but yeah if if you don't go into like meeting people with this kind of approach then yeah the the values might take a little bit longer to come up and then you might be like shit we we really don't share the same values. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking of like that typical movie trope where like a couple have been together for ages and maybe they've gotten married and they realize they one wants kids and the other one doesn't, you know? Um, it's like, hmm, we didn't talk about this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, that kind of, that, I really hope that doesn't happen too, too often in real life. <laughs> Not, yeah surely we've seen that enough times now on tv <laughs> just ask <laughs> yeah there are i mean there are things that yeah i mean i it's probably better to put that kind of stuff out there in the beginning really mm -hmm. probably. yeah I'm, I'm such a such a big believer like i obviously have so much seventh house stuff going on i've got a lot of third house libra stuff going on so i am so just in there with the with the questions um definitely like communication mind-centered first intimacy second like if we click on a, a mind level and on mm -hmm. sh a shared value basis then we can move more into the the embodied stuff of like becoming romantically and sexually involved mm -hmm. yeah 
yeah. yeah so Venus definitely a big one and Venus you know also describes what you're attracted to and what you yeah yeah what gives you pleasure and what you find pleasing mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah so could you think so yeah I'd say if if it was a square square aspect between I think the square aspect would be like there's tension but there's um it's quite obvious probably quite soon and so you either fix it or you don't um, yeah whereas like the king kunks or in conjunct might be that might that that's actually the one that i'm kind of thinking might be yeah. like uh it's not seen that might be like the movie trope you're talking about. yeah that's gonna take a while to come out uh -huh. because you're just not you're not gonna see that there's a there's or might not see that there's an issue there yeah 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 for sure um yeah yeah so your your Venus is I'm gonna remember your Venus is at the end of Sag, right? Yeah. Yeah. My Venus is at the end of Capricorn. Okay. End of Cap where? Uh twenty six. So oh yeah, because you had mentioned before that Pluto, transit Pluto was hanging oh, out. Oh yeah, Pluto's been on there for years now and I've still got yeah. years to go. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I understand I've had the same thing I get it like I, this is I, yeah. yeah it will pass it will just pass very slowly <laughs> but you'll come out like it it'll, you'll be like transformed <laughs> yeah it's, it's a lot has changed I'm very grateful for it but it's fucking intense and it's just yeah. the it's more the fact of like how how long this is going on for it's ridiculous like how long it's been chilling at that 26 <laughs> degree point because of all the yeah it's just like playing tricks on me <laughs> like please move along yeah please <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> i get it i'm transformed thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah transform someone else yeah <laughs> um so yeah venus big one and then next i'm thinking saturn saturn is such i love looking at saturn in sinistry Saturn can be a wonder Saturn could be a wonderful thing in Sinistry or it can be a total it can be a it can be an anchor or an albatross <laughs> mm -hmm. oh I love that yeah and, and by anchor I mean a good thing like it can anchor you to somebody like moon Saturn aspects like the trines the sextiles even the conjunctions conjunctions can kind of go either way but they can be an anchoring force for the for the for the moon person it could feel really nice um especially if you've never if you as the moon person have maybe grown up with a lot of instability and absolutely waywardness yes. not having yes many boundaries um yeah that's going to be a really nice influence it can also be an alba <laughs> it can be an albatross though too if you've got like um the, the harder aspects can be i mean it's not it's not like a deal breaker it's not you know but they can be hard yeah uh yeah, yeah sure. can... I think um you know I look at Saturn to see the longevity of the mm -hmm. pairing um you know especially like yeah Saturn Venus is a really nice mm -hmm. pairing um yeah that kind of endurance it's long term commitment it's the like slow slow mm -hmm. building very long lasting kind of connection and as a cap venus like that is what i'm here for um mm -hmm. i'm not here for those things that like burn brightly and then die out that's not not for me so yeah i really like mm -hmm. really like saturn in sinistry mm -hmm. um, but yeah it can be if you've had you know you'd want to kind of look at your own birth chart and if you've had if your Saturn is poorly placed and it's kind of struggling a bit and you do have a lot of experience with authority figures where you've been lauded over and you, like things have been too strict and you're um you feel like a lot of your freedom has been limited then a heavy Saturn influence in your relationship might feel fucking horrible um yeah <clears throat> yes so, so yeah definitely depends on the person I like I love a bit of Saturn <laughs> yeah yeah that is that is an important thing to look for um for sure and saturn also tends to be where 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 somebody teaches 
There's something that they, um, like, um, and, and house overlays, um, where Saturn falls, where one person Saturn falls and the other person's chart can kind of show like an, an area of life that the Saturn person is supposed to teach the house person something about mm-hmm. that area of life. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Mm. Yes. <laughs> we like Saturn. Yes, I do. Yes, for sure. <laughs> um so do you have anything else that you like to look at like planet wise or houses or angles yeah in sinistry um i was gonna ask do you ever pull the name asteroids um occasionally as in like if they've got their name asteroid yeah um i have i think i have done a few times um yeah do, do you like to use them I think it's fun. I mean, some it depends. It depends. I mean, sometimes people don't want to give their their real names, and obviously, if I don't have them, yeah, and that's fine, you know. But yeah, I, I sometimes I'll play around with that. I think it's fun um, to see what your name does in somebody else's, ch- you yeah. know, mm-hmm. or even or even where like, and this is, I guess, not really sinister so much, but even like where your own name falls in your chart or what yeah. you go by or or the name you took when you got married or you know whatever I think it is a cool thing to play yeah. with oh yeah definitely it's really fun I'm just being like oh it's there like it's doing it <laughs> yeah. love it yeah I think my name asteroid falls in my partner's first house I'm oh that's sure. cool yeah I can't remember where his sits in. I think he does have he's got a very common name I think he does have a name asteroid but I don't know where it sits in in my house and and if, and if do you do you um do you use the derivatives like when you have played with it do you um yeah I will if it's if there's something close enough then then yeah I'll use it unless I can find online that it's like no this asteroid means this um then I'll I'll leave it alone but if it's just some of them you can they're just sort of like it's up for grabs you're like yeah that's that (laughs) (laughs) that sounds good yeah (laughs) yeah um, so speaking of, should we talk about some asteroid pairings? Sure, we could talk about, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So the first one, I first pairing I had in mind was Eros and Psyche. Um, and for okay. anyone wanting to look this up, Eros is asteroid 433 and Psyche is asteroid 16. Um, yes. So this to me, if you have, you know, an Eros-Psyche conjunction, I mean, any aspect, any of the major aspects, even if they are difficult, it's a big deal, especially if they're, you know, within an exact, let's say within like one degree, then you're looking at like a very potent asteroid pairing Mm -hmm. here. Um, And Eros and Psyche contacts can signify like soulmate connection, if you subscribe to that belief. Um, And this is the love that surpasses Te- like many many tests and trials and tribulations um and the type of love that through which you achieve this kind of ascension um and like transformation um psyche is like corresponds to the butterfly and um mm-hmm. so you can really see how it's like how love can yeah totally transform you and take you from being mortal to immortal as was the case for psyche and in her mythology um but I also think this could be a pairing that (laughs) maybe you like the drama a bit too much like you can't you know how I'm trying to think like (laughs) so I'm thinking of like my teenage self right I was very traumatized and I hadn't dealt with any of it yet and I was very much seeking partners who shared similar wounds to me or who would at least like reinforce my wounds and so we'd go through this this testing trials and tribulation type deal um so that could also happen with aeropsyche contacts probably more likely if it's a square um Mm -hmm. you might fall a bit more into that category um what what do you think on this pairing? Um, I think it is like a. You should let me ask you this: when you were talking about the con, like 
do you also look at like, um, I don't know, let's say you've got somebody's Eros is conjunct somebody else's son. And then like, um, I don't know, let's say, how do I want to word this? Let me think about how I want to word this because I'm, I'm thinking about inter interjecting other things other than just um, the, the two themselves. things. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but there, I have seen this before where it seemed like it was prominent, even though they weren't actually conjunct. Yeah. So like, say your, <laughs> your son conjuncts their Eros and their Psyche. Oh, no, it's <laughs> confusing. I'm trying or, or, but, but, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? You know like, what I'm trying to say. There's like, yeah, double signatures, <laughs> like yeah. maybe the same planet showing up in both charts for each asteroid. Um, yeah, yes. Something like yes. that. Yeah, like if you, the same as you would with a chart reading, you know, and you can intuitively pick out like this signature is just repeating yeah. over and over, like, the same will happen with prominent asteroid pairing. So yeah, I'd definitely look at that if, even if there wasn't any, um, tight major aspects between the two of them um or even like you know eighth house sinistry that like eros psyche is very eighth house yeah, um yeah. and you know even this is just totally discounting the asteroids but if you in your sinistry you have a lot of eighth house stuff and you have a lot of scorpionic stuff and a lot of plutonic stuff you are likely going to identify with the story of Eros and Psyche because their their story is a very eighth house one to begin with yes. um so yeah it, it's definitely got that flavor to it yeah yeah it does and I mean her whole like transformation from being mortal to immortal you know mm -hmm. yeah. I'm also <laughs> wondering if feel free to like disagree with this because I don't know but I feel like perhaps strong aeropsyche contacts could signify like maybe a slightly overbearing mother like who <laughs> has an impact on the relationship <laughs> not, not but no, but that's very yeah like Aphrodite wasn't yeah. over maybe she was a bit overbearing with it feels weird calling Aphrodite overbearing but with but, Eros, but with him well and I've also I've also read different things where <clears throat> some mythology some versions he is her son and in some versions he's like a boy toy <laughs> right okay so i'm wondering if that's where the now if, if he was a boy toy i could kind of see the overbearing a little bit yeah. more but no but but i know what you mean like because what i was <laughs> yeah no i know what you mean um but yeah i could see that coming into play the overbearing somebody or, or somebody in the yeah yeah some outside force some outside something force. outside the relationship that can try to get in the way definitely because not only yeah like not only did that happen you know from Aphrodite not approving of Psyche but then also was Psyche's sisters who yes was like who the fuck is this guy that won't show you his face um and, <laughs> you know you, you yeah. shouldn't trust him and and that was essentially what like destroyed the relationship initially and resulted in Psyche having to go through all these trials um, to get Eros yes. back. So yeah, definitely outside forces having a detrimental impact on the relationship. You could say family, probably going to be family. Yeah. More than like, more than likely. Yeah. In, in most cases, yes, probably. Yeah. So, and would you say, I mean, yeah, you could see that if there was like fourth house stuff coming up or like, any mm -hmm. contacts with the ruler of the fourth um mm -hmm. and yeah yeah i'd probably look at those things and maybe the square if there's a square between Eros and psyche yeah. you might you might be more prone to these dynamics mm -hmm. yeah 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 anything else to say uh, on on those two no i think that's well i was gonna say um there is, um, you know, in the story, Zephyrus, was that? He was the one that actually saved her when she was going to fall, when she was going to fall to her death. Okay. The West Wind comes in and saves her. Right. Uh, I almost feel like you could pull the asteroid, if you're if you're going going with this, you could almost pull the asteroid, um, I might pronounce this wrong, Zephyr, Zephyr. Okay. <laughs> oh, is it like Z-E-P-H-Y-R? Yes. 
Yeah. It's 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 one, two, nine, two, three. I almost <laughs> wonder that if you could incorporate this because since he kind of he saved her from her death. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um I might be curious about that too. I'm not totally sure how I would incorporate that, but I would be curious about it. Yeah, and I think like, because this is the great thing about asteroids, it's like, you know, okay, yeah, let's say Eros and Psyche is really doing big things and you can be like, okay, let's take this further. Now let's introduce the other, let's put in Astro, um, Aphrodite, let's put in Zephyr. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, she could put um, her in too, for sure. Yeah, and then you can start to see like this whole painting and the chart of like, wow, okay, this is this is very very <laughs> aligned with your your soul's journey, and and that person, you know, would do really well to to research that mythology. So yeah, definitely, I love looking at the more obscure ones that are involved in the in the mm -hmm. story, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. So do you have any other pairings that you? I was going to say you could, um, you could, well, I, I guess it would depend on the dynamics of the relationship. It kind of depends on what the relationship looks like to me as far as which ones all mess, which pairings all mess with, you know, which ones kind of seem like, I'm looking at her, I'm like, hmm, this seems like this kind of a relationship. Let's check these asteroids out. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but you could look at Adam and Eve. Nice. Yeah. Or, or Adam and Lilith even if you wanted to nice. um and those for those um for lilith you could use the asteroid lilith if you wanted to that's 1181 black moon lilith um you could, i mean do, use there four of them use Voldemort ever oh i find that one fascinating that one happens to be conjunct my um my north node <laughs> right yeah so yeah, I have I'm asteroid real curious. Lilith conjunct my north node. But yeah, world math is, I didn't even know she existed until like, you know, a few months ago. And it was very synchronistic. Like I had, I was having a lot of dreams with Lilith type figures in. And I had this one dream. This is a total um, diversion. Please bear <laughs> with me talking about my fucking dreams. But <laughs> um, yeah, I had this dream with this sort of Lilith type figure and the stuff I was doing in the dream was very Lilith-esque and in this dream there were these two moons and one of them was our moon and the other one was called like Little Earth or something and they were just it was just so beautiful and then I woke up like what the hell that was really cool and then a few months later I found out there's this other Lilith called Waldemath Lilith um, and it is a hypothetical second moon for earth and I was like what the fuck I was like she came to me <laughs> in my dreams and told me about this and so I started plugging it into people's charts and every chart I plugged it into it was like conjunct the the ascendant conjunct the north node conjunct the moon I was like wow like she is <laughs> loud so yeah I love Voldemort yeah that one is that one is in, that one is is very interesting to me um mm -hmm. I've heard it referenced as like the darkest, <laughs> the darkest part of the Lilith story. Yeah. Kind of like the different Liliths um, represent different parts of that story. And yeah. that's the darkest part. I don't know how I feel about that with that conjunct my North Node, but you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like World Math Lilith is like the state of exile and the state of being in grief. <laughs> um, like that, that phase of um, the Lilith story. Yeah. But I do definitely think like I'll I'll generally look like if asteroid Lilith is the most dominant in, in the chart, then I'll just deal with that, you know, and, and yeah. I'll incorporate all of Lilith's story um rather than trying to break it up too much, I guess. Um yeah. but yeah, World Map is super interesting. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, so I like that idea of using Adam and Eve or Adam and Lily. Um, for for um for for Eve, you have to use Eva. Right. Um, it's number one sixty four. Just for anybody wanting to, you know. <laughs> and for Adam, you use Adams. It is nineteen ninety six. Okay. So, I think those are are interesting. You could also look at like Pluto and Persephone. Yeah, I've got Persephone and Hades down. Um, you can do that, yeah. Pluto, yeah. 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 Um, and there's also a um, 
I really struggle with saying the the Roman um, version of is it Pro Proserpina? Yeah, the, that sounds right. Yeah. I could be wrong about that. <laughs> it's it's okay. spelt like that. It's something like that. <laughs> but yeah, um, Persephone, Hades, Persephone, Pluto, Proserpina, Pluto. That kind of. If there's anything going on there, that's going to be a very <laughs> significant. I see yeah. this as like you might not really like feel it at first like this might Probably be someone not. that you're like when you meet them you're like ew <laughs> but <laughs> um it's the type of love that like over time wow you two will be bonded for life and you won't want to look at anyone else it's that kind of connection yeah. um very enduring very transformational but like maybe some power struggles in there yeah probably <laughs> but a little just a little bit just a little bit with Pluto <laughs> <Too major. laughs> uh, I'm trying to see if there were any what about just um just asteroids in general for like um that you look at like look at in sinistry even if they're not pairings just ones that you like right. to um I I definitely always do go for pairings I guess okay i yeah, and I, I generally will look at like the, so yeah, Persephone, Psyche, um, any asteroids that denote, um, or that Degenera one you said, being a victim. And then I'll also look at like, you know, maybe someone's Nessus, their Chiron, that energy of like wanting to be the savior and wanting mm -hmm. definitely more Chiron than Nessus with wanting to be a savior. Um, but yeah, if there's any of those dynamics in there, because that's a very common story in people's relationships, you know, mm -hmm. one is the the hero and one is the the victim, and it can be really mm -hmm. easy to like perpetuate those cycles with yes. each other. So yeah, those are those are cool ones. Um, but yeah, generally that's going to come out if you're looking at these pairings anyway. Like if you were looking at Persephone Hades, that's so you might see some victim stuff in there um also persephone is asteroid number 399 and hades is a hypothetical point and he's h41 um yes. yeah i also have down isis on and osiris um okay. so isis is 42 osiris is 1923 and this is another like yeah another really strong pairing if you've got a, a lot of like repeating signatures going on between both of your Osiris and Isis asteroids then this is going to be a partnership that is you you go through a lot you overcome a lot you're very committed to each other again mm -hmm. a lot of transformation um a lot of mini deaths it does feel like very similar to the Persephone and Psyche that we've been talking about like yeah I am very drawn a... to to these types. <laughs> I'm saying a lot about myself here. <laughs> these are the no, two I... things I'm drawn to. But yeah, no, I, I think these are really, that's another really strong pairing to look at. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would agree. I would definitely agree. Mm -hmm. And then Juno, Jupiter. Really, <laughs> yeah. um, you can get a lot yeah. looking there. Um, do you want to say some stuff on Juno and Jupiter? I wanted to well you mentioned okay you mentioned just to what yeah. you were talking about before you mentioned um like a savior complex mm -hmm. another thing you could look at is the asteroid night oh nice yeah um 29391 um like the white knight <laughs> yeah the knight in shining armor yes um see if that's doing anything like see where you know it is in your chart how kind of how you might function that way or what you need in that regard and then if it happens to conjunct something in somebody else's chart or trying or whatever might give yeah I would definitely look at that too for the savior kind of yeah like I'm thinking say someone had their night asteroid conjunct your child asteroid like that is just <laughs> a straight up pairing for like please save me come and rescue me my inner child needs you um it very yes it very well could <laughs> And you know, there's there's nothing 
there's nothing wrong with that urge it's just like important to be mindful because it is very easy to just it's it's coming from a place of being wounded and it's coming from a place of lack you know and so if you're if you're really feeding into each other in this way it, it can be quite toxic it can be because i mean really the the goal here for i think for everybody should be to kind of be your own white knight and you, yeah you know what i mean that really really um but yeah if if, if if i guess both people aren't kind of trying to do that it can, yeah it could cause some <laughs> some issues for sure mm -hmm. Do you have any other asteroids you like to look at? Um, I like to look. Um, I know. I, I think I mentioned it bef before in the other video briefly. Spirit. I do mm -hmm. like to look at spirit. Um, now I can't figure out where the hell I wrote that down. Okay, the number is thirty-seven four five two. Uh, I also like to look at um, at Alma. Uh, it also means soul, kind of like um, like psyche means soul. Right. Um, it's number is 390. I like to see what these are doing in 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 sinistry, just kind of get an idea as to what might touch what karma is another one. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't always take it literally, like, but there's usually something going yeah, on. Yeah, and and if you know all these, if you had like maybe three or more asteroids like doing like those ones you're just saying, like karma and um, spirit and stuff, if they were all like doing prominent things in the, the sinistry chart, then you can really paint a picture. Like this is a very karmic connection. Um, yeah. This is definitely a, a past life connection, um, which can be, yeah, really, really helpful to know. Um, and you can then start to dig into like, okay, what, lessons do we have what do we need to avoid that we're not repeating and yeah, yeah. why did we decide to come around again together you know exactly yeah <laughs> yeah let's not like waste another lifetime doing the same things as before and let's do what we're here to do yeah yeah no I, yeah and those yeah looking for those signatures to kind of see what's up yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm trying to think um i I'll say it again. I do like to look. I do like to just take a look at the name stuff, just to yeah. kind of play around with it. Um, I think did I have anything else written down? Uh, no, I think I have pretty much everything. Yeah, I, I, didn't, have I anything. didn't have anything else either. We are so in sync. <laughs> what That's what sinistry does, guys. <laughs> Good yeah, it does. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess um I guess we'll take off then I have to get my son up anyway. But um, but I'll go ahead and say check L out, Stellar Sanctum, the asteroid quest that she that yeah, that started on the 14th, right? Yeah, yeah, it's released. It's a one-to-one -one service. It's like a really fucking cool birth chart reading using the asteroids. Sanctum. Yeah. So check it out. It's new. Check it out. Um, and I guess um, we'll go ahead and take off. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure as always. Yes. Yes, it has been. <laughs> all right. Well, I will um, I will see all of y'all out there later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Let's see.